Thomas Philippon has shown, I think convincingly, using the US as his source of data, that for 130 years, the finance industry has not shown any efficiency gains at all. That's right, because the way he frames the question is different from the way you might naturally frame it, if you like. So he's not saying, how many transactions can you do for $100? He's saying, how well has the finance industry served the outside world? How much does it cost to take $1 of our savings and then reinvest it in a, the economy and finds no improvement in that at all? Clearly what's going on is that, for sure, the finance industry has got far more complex and sophisticated. But the cost of that complexity and sophistication has consumed any efficiencies that there may have been. You might forgive it if we had a much more stable financial system today, but actually there's little evidence that the financial system is more stable than it was 50 or 100 years ago either. The growth of knowledge, the pace of knowledge growth has accelerated. IT, of course, has transformed almost every industry we can think of apart from finance, and finance is the knowledge industry par excellence exactly. and an enormous user of IT. High frequency trading is the perfect example of the problem because it's something that's been permitted by extremely costly technology. But what's it about? Well, it's about two different groups of intermediaries competing with each other to no benefit at all, as far as you can tell, to the end consumer of these services. Yeah, I think that's certainly true for much of the high frequency trading that takes place. And you could imagine that if that was multiplied through the financial system, this might help explain Philippon's conclusions that, that actually we're doing stuff, but it's not purposeful because it's through so many agents and it's only thinking about what the agents want rather than what the principal wanted in the first place. I mean, the real puzzle here is why uniquely competition, the normal processes of market discipline, just haven't worked and aren't working uh, for finance and why customers have allowed finance professionals to forget who the customer is and forget the purpose of the, of the operation. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, I, I guess if you were to say what might be peculiar about finance, it would be that the people who are selling the products know a lot more about them than the people that are buying them. I mean, that's not unique to finance. Medicine, for example, would be a very good similar example where your doctor knows much more about what it is that they're going to do uh, to treat you to make you better. But, but the doctor feels under an obligation that they have to do what is in your best interest. And maybe in the finance industry, that sense of obligation to do the right thing isn't there, and even if it was, it would be dissipated through all these principal agent, principal agent chains. If it was there in finance, it's clearly disappeared now. So I think the problem is clear. Uh, the question is what we can do about it. Um, you could say, reboot the system. How are we going to make, uh, bring the market discipline into the world of finance? Yeah, I think that's right, and it's probably not just one thing, but you could start by saying, how do you get markets to work well? I mean, here's an extraordinary thing that um, I think people don't focus on. You know, when you're told how much it's costing to run your pension or run your investment, you're not told about all the charges that are commissioned on your behalf. We know that markets don't work if people are unable to determine what the cost was of the thing that they just purchased. So surely just one simple thing you could do would be to think about, well, how do we let people know about these costs? How can we make the choice for people simple so that they can make sure that they're buying things that are to their advantage? A, a lot of times in finance, you are giving people discretion to run your money. Usually when you give people discretion, you also have some role in governance. And until we get an information system in place that in an efficient, simple, digestible way enables the consumer to compare and contrast both price and quality, we won't get anywhere. So it's a mixture of culture, professional discipline, regulation, and transparency. That one statistic I love is that in 1990, there were 3,000 pages of regulation for pensions in the UK. And the last statistic I saw, it was just going north of 80,000 pages of regulation. We're reeling off page and page and page of regulation, but actually what we're not doing is saying, how is it that effectively and efficiently we can allow people to save for something that will give them a reliable income from the time that they retire until the time that they die? That's the purpose of a pension. Um, just try and frame it so that institutions are competing the best that they possibly can to be able to do that, and we've not done that. 
No, it's clear to me that excess regulation is the cause of the problem rather than any sort of solution. It's quite close to home for me because, as you know, I do quite a lot of work in accounting mm. and taxation, which are both areas which are knee-deep in rules. And the response of practitioners is often just to lean on the rules and say, show me where it says I can't do this. Yes, yes. And that's an impossible game to win. Yes. We have to reverse out of that regulatory culture. So it would seem to me, Chris, that what we might be looking towards is something where we have a really strong sense of a professional standard, a fiduciary standard that is serving the outside world. That we've got a governance system that means that the outside world can oversee what it is that's taking place. That we've got a regulator who's trying to get a framework where that works, but where markets work as well so that people know what they're buying and can buy the thing that is best for them, but that are advised to do the right thing through a proper set of professionals. And that just doesn't seem to be happening right now. No, and I think what we need boils down to three things. We need culture, we need appropriate discipline and regulation, and we need the oxygen of transparency and information. When I talk about this stuff, People always say, well, who's going to do this? And it feels to me that there isn't a one who that's going to do this. That, that kind of what we're looking at is an ecosystem of finance where customers play a role, suppliers play a role, regulators play a role. Actually, the way we train people plays a role in how it is that we move towards a better system. But people do need to have a clear vision of where it is that we're going to. You're right. All of those parties have a have a piece of this. Let's start with the, with the customers mm -hmm. first. We're going to need to help them do this. And we help them by educating them um, and by giving them the information they need to make concise, clear comparisons between both the performance and the cost of financial products. I mean, another thing that I think works quite well is default products for people. You know, I mean, we've been quite successful in the savings part of pensions in the UK with this auto enrolment. So, you know, the employers have all agreed that they'll take a small amount from your pay package that the government and the employer will contribute a bit and it'll all go into, it'll all go into a pension. And everyone said, oh, well, no one will buy into that because they'll want to do it themselves. Actually, 80, 90, 95% of people, they wanted to do that. And then they wanted to go into the simplest default product that they possibly could do. If we could set up, set up those default products for people, then the simple things that they want to do, banking, pensions and so on, they can get ready access to something. May not be the very, very best deal that they can possibly find, maybe not the best for people with peculiar circumstance, but it works for 90% well, of people. Well, sadly we know that very often the simplest will be the very, very best. Yes, that's right. Bitter experience yeah. tells us. Yes, if we can get back to that culture of simplicity, in all of the main areas of financial services, then we're really in business. So that's about educating the customer. Another piece of this, obviously, this is something we're working hard on at London Business School at the moment, is educating the finance profession itself. We've got this body of knowledge, quite technical body of knowledge, about investments and corporate finance and accounting and so on. And it's necessary that you learn all of that stuff, just as it's necessary that a doctor should understand biochemistry. But it doesn't teach you how to be a financier any more than biochemistry teach you, teaches you how to be a doctor. And I wonder whether in all our business schools where we're teaching finance, particularly where we're teaching it as a single course, that we don't need to be adding a requirement to understand the purpose of finance and the things that make the industry work. Um, and I think if we did, that that would be a long-term uh, investment in getting some productivity and efficiency into the industry. And then I think the regulators and the policy makers, they also have to think about what it is that they're trying to do. The regulator has to take some responsibility, I think, for the broad framework of finance that allows it to go better. I worry that they may pose as the biggest challenge of all because regulators have created a world of extreme complexity and persuading them to reverse out of that yes. uh, may be a challenge. I, I, would, I would really love it if every regulator had to do the study every year that Thomas Philippon did and say, how much is my finance industry costing to do its job for the outside world? And just to track that over time, are we managing to get the benefits of technology and knowledge 
passed on to the outside world, because in the last 130 years the evidence is we've failed on that. Overall, I am optimistic. Are you, David? I think that there is a core nugget here, Chris, that is about purpose, that if we can keep people asking, how do you deliver to your purpose, then that's a way that we can think about how banks do their job of taking money and investing it in, in the real world, of keeping our money safe, pension funds give us pensions, uh, savings accounts give us good savings, where we keep the costs down uh, and deliver to uh, the outside world, of course to the saver, but also to the company that needs to borrow. We need to rediscover the purpose of finance. Rediscover the purpose of finance.